electrical vehicle charging infrastructure so in this uh, the objectives of this electrical vehicle charging infrastructure is different ev charging fundamentals and type of converters that is used in ev charging and ev charging station design installation design architectures energy and asset management and some sort of smart charging perspectives and future perspectives with integration of renewable energy technology so i'll just give go uh, on overview kind of thing giving wherever the depth is required so first of all you may be awareing that the component the main components that in the ic engine is replaced with the battery here so the components of electric powertrain are one is high voltage battery compressor vacuum pump heater onboard charger and uh, electric drive dc dc converter traction and traction and battery coolant pumps and the power distribution box or power distribution unit so all these things you can observe here in this one so basically in if you see a, a vehicle vehicle will be having say there are the two wheels in this vehicle here these wheels are connected via the inverter which is having a motor and the gearbox the complete inverter with motor and the gearbox is called as e drive or electric drive so this drive is getting voltage or power from the main distribution high voltage bus so this from the high voltage dc bus the power is coming from this power distribution unit to this inverter this inverter is connected to the motor that motor is connected to a gearbox and that gearbox are connected to the wheels so that is how it is there now you observe this this uh, direction is in two way so that means the power is coming from the power distribution unit to the e drive as well as the energy from the e drive is also coming back to the power distribution unit this is happening when 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 the when when you are not taking any energy from the when you are not taking any energy from the dc power distribution unit and at the time even the vehicle due to its inertia if it is in the motion the the wheels are automatically connected to the gearbox and the motor and this motor will act as a generator and it will generate some amount of current that current will be feeding back with respect to some voltage so that is reason why this is a bidirectional signal that is happening here now this is a power distribution box this power distribution box getting the power from the battery pack this is getting power from the battery pack now this is main important from the battery pack the energy is taking to the power distribution unit and from the power distribution unit the energy is going to this e drive this is going to the e drive now here important thing is how this battery pack is getting energized how this battery pack is getting energized this battery pack is getting energized in two ways one way is if you directly connect at the vehicle inlet if you directly connect the ac supply i mean like through any external interface such as uh, electric vehicle charging station equipment and with the help of some sort of a cable and if you connect to the vehicle inlet and this vehicle inlet is having ac supply here this ac is going to the onboard charger this onboard charger is connected to the power distribution box that is of 450 to 450 volts and it is different ranges also even in a verito it is having different range so from the external adapter there is a cable that cable is going to the inlet of the vehicle and that inlet is having ac that ac there is a charger that is on board on the vehicle itself 
that is something like uh, one kilowatt onwards till five kilowatt or two six kilowatts also available that charger will charge the vehicle through this power distribution box to the battery pack so this mechanism is called ac charger or we can call it as a slow charger and in the vehicle inlet if you directly give dc itself and this dc is directly connected to the high voltage power distribution box and from the high voltage power distribution box it is connected to the battery pack then it is called then it is called dc fast charging so this battery pack is getting cooled by using this battery cooling and the take the power is taken from the compressor so this is how it is happening and also as i told there is a, a some auxiliary battery so from the high voltage distribution see there is no connection from the high voltage distribution box to the auxiliary battery however from the onboard charger when you are charging this battery pack the with the help of dc dc converter this 12 volt battery will be charged this is called auxiliary this may be 12 volt this may be 24 volt also that uh, 24 volts also battery will be happen and also uh, this is how this attraction cooling system and the controlling will also takes place here this is how the complete architecture as a basic architecture of the vehicle uh, powertrain will be there basically there are three major items here one is battery pack distribution unit e drive so this battery pack is charged by using ac power with the help of onboard charger or by using a dc power now we are going to little in depth into this ac and dc how actually it is different from actual charging now we may be also charging our uh, uh, mobiles we may be also charging our mobiles using some sort of adapter so that is something like a slow charger slow charger in the sense we are directly giving ac and that adapter is actually converting ac into dc and then we are charging our mobile so now what is happening when you are increasing the power of the adapter now initially the power was only like 10 uh, 2 watts 3 watts 5 watts 6 watts and nowadays the power has come to 50 watt and they are claiming it as a fast charger in the mobiles so similarly here also the same case when we try to increase the power extra power of the uh, power of the charger that charger we are calling as a high voltage or fast charging because the reason is here the onboard charger is of less size less power due to less power the size of the onboard charger is less and it is it is compatible to fix in the vehicle itself but if you want to charge your battery with high faster rate you have to increase the size of the power electronic component so that power electronic component size will not be suitable to keep in the uh, vehicle itself if it is feasible yes you can take onboard charger also as a dc fast charging also we can take since that uh, size is uh, at present condition the size was a little high that's the reason why they are putting externally charging facility and through that external charging facility they are directly charging the high voltage battery pack this is the simplest uh, uh, architecture of this uh, electric vehicle system any queries in this so if you have any queries please uh, you know um, interrupt me at any time no issues now so this one let us talk about the slow charger so in the slow charger what is happening and uh, the, the three phase ac power supply that is coming that power supply is going to a rectifier that rectifier is converting ac into dc that dc is going to dc dc converter from there it is going to the battery pack so it is a high voltage battery pack and this current to the battery pack is controlled by using this charging controller now we have to know how fast we should charge it so that type of charging mechanism is called cc cv charging mechanism that you can see here now you can observe carefully 
so you may be heard what the concept called cccv cc means the current holds a steady current till some certain particular point and then it will and then we have to operate that particular dc dc converter into cv mode such that the current will hold a constant voltage why this cccv operation is required now this cc operation to 80% of soc is required because we wanted to charge the vehicle at faster rate and after that 80% will go into cv mode now the question is why only 80% why not it will be less than 80% i why not it will be more than 80% yes it can go plus or minus 2 volts here and there but the thing is what is happening as we have seen when you are trying to throw more amount of current the terminal voltage obviously will be higher than the battery voltage and when we try to measure that voltage it will read both the battery voltage and terminal voltage as same so when we read, when we see that the terminal voltage is going beyond the specified value the battery may even go into fault state that is reason why we will charge the battery at higher rate till 80% of soc after 80% of soc we will charge the battery at lower current when we charge the lower current obviously uh, for example i am telling if i want to throw 10 ampere 10 ampere amount of current so i may be uh, explaining you this if i want to throw 10 ampere amount of current and this 10 ampere amount of current i wanted to throw battery voltage is say 12 volt and my terminal voltage is say 12.1 volt and now so based on this voltage difference i is equal to v by r so i uh, that resistance that i need to keep or the current that i need to keep is v 12.1 minus 12 divided by r so this r decides how much amount of current that should be thrown now what is happening right now i'm i'm throwing at 10 ampere at 10 ampere the difference is 0.1 volt now if i want to go for 100 ampere so obviously the obviously i have to throw very high amount of current and i have to increase my charging current so when i increase charging current obviously the higher potential i means the voltage at the terminals will be increased from 12.1 it may go to 13.5 or 14 also i'm just giving an example not the perfect calculation so the terminal voltage will be really high and our voltage is say 14.6 is the maximum if certain times if you try to charge again charge on that constant rate the voltage may go even beyond that also so that is reason why we will take 80% as the optimum till that it will reach to the 14.6 volts after it is reaching to the 80 percent as so see i will take my voltage to be constant and i'll try to down the current little low so that so that i'll i'll make my battery to be safer say for example here one more situation from 0 to 100 percent soc till 80 percent soc i can go in say half an hour or one hour from 80 percent soc to 100 100 percent soc i'll take at least one more hour so that is the reason of uh, that is the reason that cccv for first 80% it is going very high speed charge after 80% it will taking lot much amount of time to charge to 100% so that is the reason behind uh, the cccv uh, operation here so now we'll see we'll see what so are the this, this cccv is a natural um natural curve or is it like you know because initially the there will be a, we try to maintain a constant current and then you know the there will be a constant voltage which will be there correct no no it is not a natural curve if mm -hmm. we try to go on same current the battery may be at over voltage and battery may also bust mm -hmm. so that is reason why we definitely should go for a charge controller if we don't use charge controller the battery will be overcharged Mm -hmm. even in our even normal mobiles also if you see even if you try to leave your charger for certain long time mm -hmm. nothing will happen to the uh, your uh, mobile mm -hmm. and if you recollect uh, some of our old, earlier days or olden days you would mm -hmm. have seen that battery is bulging if you leave it for uh, yeah, overnight yeah. 
so this local or cheap quality equipment what actually they do they don't have any charge controller they completely do in a in a full current constant okay. current mode okay. okay okay so charge controller is a definite and it is not a natural phenomenon so now the vehicle electric vehicle has four different modes of charging first mode is and these four different modes of charging i am telling in terms of uh, iec 61851-1 so this indicate this code is electric vehicle conductive charging system so this electrical vehicle charging has two modes again one is wireless electrical vehicle charging and one is wired or conductive charging system as of now most of the countries are using conductive charging system and they are trying to uh, go for the wireless charging system some some countries also evolved with some technology but commercially it has not come into picture yet and this kind of, so that's the reason why i'm so i'm mo mostly focusing on the conductive charging system that is wired wired uh, charging system in this one there are four modes of operation one uh, so the first three modes are with ac only and the fourth mode of operation is called with dc so in the first mode of operation we go with a standard domestic uh, domestic circuit itself i mean i'll show you 